mon ami, what's up? Hey everyone, um, let's check out something. The first song on Harmony House. Um, this one's pretty loaded, so let's go ahead and crank into it. Here we've got the project file. The main idea for this song before I started making it was um, kind of just like a modern take at like stick it to the man sort of music. Um, I was listening to a lot of David Byrne and like the Talking Heads and just like like um, like Devo and um, that whole like new wave like uh, technology, but like making fun of technology. It's an interesting balance because it's all like synth driven music, but it's kind of like talking about how technology is like taking over the world. So just an interesting paradox that I was interested in. And I mean, definitely speaks to times like these um, where we are spending most of our time on our devices. But the whole song started out. Um, let's zoom in here. Okay. The song started, I, I actually wrote the song too, maybe in like 20 minutes. Um, and this, all the recording is pretty much the same as the day I recorded it. So I just was sitting there just going crazy and recorded all of this in like 20 minutes and just, you know, mixed it a lot since, um, a lot more than 20 minutes of mixing, but most of it was recorded that day, which is pretty special. And I wanted the song to be, sorry, I know I'm talking so much before I play anything, um, but I wanted the song to be like, everything was pointing to the purpose of the song in the lyrics. And so since it's about this fast-driven culture of materialism, I wanted the song to be under two minutes. So that was an intentional thing. Um, where at the end of the song, it just turns into this crazy wall of noise, um, and it's all under two minutes. So that was intentional. But anyways, the song started out with this cowbell loop that I was playing um, right here. I was actually um, recording this song in my uh, old guitarist's like shed. I had my studio set up in this like shed outside on his ranch. Really gracious of him to, really gracious of his family to let me um, use their space um, in order to set up my studio for a couple months. Um, but in this recording, it's terribly, um, you know, isolated because there's an air conditioner like right behind the microphone. And I didn't think this would make the cut and it kind of makes it more fun. But I mean, that's a really noisy recording. Um, but also who freaking cares? Uh, rock and roll is here to stay. Yeah, so I did that and then just this drum loop. Oh. Oh, where'd the cowbell go? Okay, there we are. Yeah, and it kind of has this like, just drive constant, like, it doesn't have a start or an end. It's just this groove that you like live inside of. Um, just the claps on the, you know, the downbeats and it just keeps going. It feels very, uh, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it, but very driven. And so essentially throughout the song, it just layers more and more. Um, nothing musically really changes. Um, you know, it's a verse, chorus, hook, verse, chorus, hook, noise, done. Um, but the chords or anything don't change. It's actually just more things being built on top of each other. So um, there's lots of other little layers. Like here we have a shaker just going. You know, you, you should always just add a shaker. It's just nice. A Mellotron sample that's like... You know, it goes with a clap. Kind of feels like an alarm siren going on. Here's like a Mellotron violin. I'm just playing the root note, which is a C. Sounds like a tea kettle or something. Um, and I'm just playing with the pitch wheel just a little bit. And then at the end, rise it up. Just making you feel anxious. And then I have this crazy noise loop. Um, that happens on a Korg MS-20 that I have right there. Um, and I just turned up the uh, filters all the way and we're just playing with the resonance sweeps and stuff. So it sounds like this. Music. 
to top it off, I have the classic DJ air horn in here, which was a pretty fun idea, because I just thought it was dumb at first, and it would be really funny. Just kind of making a statement about like party culture, like, yeah. Um, but I tuned it, which took a while to figure out, um, down to a C on the last note. So it kind of turns into a, like a synth drone. Um, so it like, that nothing beats you that takes the time. Yeah. Um, which I can't remember if that was an accident or not, at least at first. Um, but um, I don't know if people tune their DJ, DJ air horn sound effects. Um, but I just freaking did. Yeah, that's all the percussion elements. I'll just keep looping it here because this is the pinnacle of the song, I guess. So. Here's all the layers we have just discussed, all of the craziness and the noise. Let's get all the drums and punch kids and stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so now more musical things. The guitar just like adds this percussive like build up kind of thing. Just playing a C, but open it up. Nice. Um, and then we have the bass sound, which was really fun. Uh, this is a hard thing to uh, finalize, so we've really got just it's super like PC music almost. It's like it's just so like um, digital dystopian. Yeah, so the one of the samples it's layered four times. So one of the samples is from a Korg M1 plugin that I have. Um, I'm afraid to open it because it kind of crashes pretty often. Um, but it's just like a m plugin VST model of a uh, Korg M1, which is like a famous digital synthesizer, I think from the 90s. I just love those cheesy like vocal um, construction bass sounds is what I think of, um, of like, I don't know, like in those digital synths. Um, I have a, a D50 up there, which is, you know, a lot of sounds like that, but nothing that I could find. So I had to use a plugin. Um, then second, it's layered with another M1 sample or a patch. You know, super similar, but just adds more grit and dirt to it. And it just kind of feels like a, a punch to the face. Um, which was, oddly enough, the goal. And then I layered it with an actual bass. You know, we're just sending this dude through Decapitator. Thick, mild crunch, such a great preset just to start off with. EQ'd, compressed, but I mean... I record all my bass DI, uh, guitar as well. You know, just using plugins. I just find it so much easier to um, have control. And then I layered it with a guitar, um, an octave higher, obviously, um, just to add more crunch and texture. All of them together. Yeah! And I've got little moments in here where I do like cowbell fills, uh, but it was all just recorded in one take, just spliced it up. Yeah, that noise is just crazy, and I couldn't fix it, but, you know, it's kind of the charm of DIY home recording. That's what it's all about. Let's see, we've got like an air horn at the beginning. It's the very start of the album, so I thought I'd add a little message. Um, you know, I was feeling generally pretty anxious at the time of making this, and 
and I wanted the song to feel anxious. Um, but I have, I forget what I say here, so I titled it Welcome. It says, I'm glad you're here. My name's Flo, my name's Stakelo, my name's Flo, my name's Stakelo. I'm glad you're here. My name's Sloan, my name's Stakelo, my name's Sloan, my name's Stakelo. Little thing I like to put in, in my songs, things that you just can't even hear, but I know they're there. And now I guess if you watch this video, you know they're there. Welcome into my secret little world. Okay, before we go into the vocals, let's just check out this lead. So this is actually what I'm calling the Harmony House theme. Um, so the general idea of Harmony House was to talk about change and things that I'm going through and show that there are reoccurring themes no matter what season you're in. Um, so throughout Harmony House, I have this melody that shows up pretty much in every song. Um, it's like... So it's kind of like a TV theme song or something um, that shows up in a bunch of different ways, but obviously first song of the record is where it shows up. But this is the first time that I actually uh, wrote it. So originally it just existed in this one song, um, but you know now it's in pretty much all of them. But it just introduces the melody. So that's a guitar stacked with a D50 patch. Um, and then a JX3P. So a lot of people have been asking about this sound. Um, people think it's like a recorder, you know, hot cross buns kind of thing. Um, and it's actually my JX3P, um, which <clears throat> I will show you. Um, it's one of my favorite. Oops. Um, one of my favorite little patches on it. Um, but it's called Song Whistle. Anyways, um, just super fun, quirky little sound. Um, it just immediately makes you feel like you're a cartoon bumblebee or something, um, you know, and that, it never hurts to feel like that. So, um, yeah, it's a synth patch, but all three of them stacked together I thought sounded pretty great. It's just kind of this got this drive like opening sequence type sound to it which was definitely I was going for because um, Harmony House kind of just feels like my, my original idea approaching Harmony House was to make it be like the soundtrack to a sitcom that just doesn't exist and um, you know I was feeling kind of like I was on stage and I was like being watched it's like the ironic thing about sitcoms, they're just supposed to be like normal lives and we like compare our lives to those. And I kind of felt like that's what was starting to happen to me is I was just like living just my normal life, but somehow it's like interesting now to other people. Um, yeah, it goes beyond making music, which I never really understood. Um, but it's crazy. Yeah. So Harmony House is kind of just like the idea of a sitcom that doesn't exist, a whole entire soundtrack. Um, and this is like the opening title sequence, so it's awesome that people have been saying it sounds like a TV theme song or something, because that was the goal. So if anybody um, making a TV show out there, you know, the next uh, Netflix original wants to get me a multi-million dollar contract, take something, you can have it. Anyways, okay, let's uh, let's check out the vocals. So we've got just a lead vocal. Taking me down. Where is the place? Calling a cab. A lot of tape saturation. Now that it's all. Because it's such a like direct driven song and I wanted it to feel like really dry. I mean I still have like a delay there, but I want it to be dry up front, hearing the message, almost like through a megaphone. Um, not as sharp all. as that, but 
but you get that kind of sound through heavy compression, quick attack, and um, saturating the crap out of it. Then call it a lady, what'll it be? A harmony. Time won't take nothing, believe me, it's you that takes the time. Tell me if what makes you someone is something, then why can't I have mine? Some I'm impact so uh, ad libs. <laughs> Which was me just kind of like jamming the day I was recording it, and um, it stayed. Take it again, edit the I have this titled Strange Man Vocals. Just underneath. Edit the face. Love what you see. Copy and paste. Isn't it magic? Don't you wanna have it? Just <laughs> making it feel more, you know, talking heads, Thomas Dolby kind of deal. Compile the content, you film in a mosh pit, you ship in a box it, right to your doorstep. Father Amazon speaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got Jeff Bezos in the studio. Um, okay, so lyrics keep going. Oh yeah, there's a group vocal shout here. That's mine. I love group vocals. Um, let's see what we've got in here. I think it's just me stacked a bunch of times, and there's one of my friend Peyton, um, which I can hear the most. This is Peyton's. That's <laughs> mine. <laughs> kind of like a British inflection there or something. Um, That's mine. Yeah, I just That's wanted to do like silly voices. Just hand them. Oh, there's one of my mom. I forgot about that. Here's my mom's. That's mine. Kind of That's a whisper mine. shout. That's good. That's mine. That's great. That's her. That's her favorite lyric of the song. Usually she'll kind of skip around the others and then that's mine she gets, you know, so had to put her in the recording. That's mine. That's mine. That's a crazy falsetto. But anyways, all together. That's mine. Beautiful that's choir. Mine. Okay. Yeah, the outro vocals. Pretty cool thing happens. So on the lead vocal, I take so the long. tape delay. Just start twisting it. Yeah, and so I do another. Yeah, just trying to make it feel just very like once in a lifetime, the Talking Heads video where he's just sweating and there's just like crazy energy is what I was going for. And, you know, had to end the song with the, ah, as one does. Um, but yeah, that's all the tracks we've got. So we can take a listen through so the outro. I think I got it right. Oh, actually, it's much, it's a couple seconds shorter than I thought. But yeah, the goal was under two minutes, which, you know, Tierra Wack is doing the whole like one minute thing, which is just insane. I have no idea how. That's just, that's pretty incredible. But everybody's got short attention spans these days. Um, so let's see if, you know, everybody sits through a 20 minute video of me breaking down <laughs> a two minute song. Um, for those of you who have made it this far, thank you for being here. Um, I love breaking these down. Again, if y'all have any questions about specific things on the songs, um, just uh, let me know. But anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to the album. Share it with uh, 
all your friends, let your pets listen to it, see how they react. Uh, maybe burn a CD, give it to your neighbor. Um, I don't know. Yeah, just uh, keep listening to Dayglow because um, I'm, I'm definitely biased in that message, but I'm really glad that you guys are part of the team and um, we're having fun. But anyways, everybody, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next episode. Goodbye. Goodbye.